Hey, what's going on everybody? Jay Glees here, and this video is a continuation of one of the tips that I made going over a play from the split close. I got a lot of requests for more plays from this formation. So we're gonna go in and do an entire mini scheme and just go over a couple of plays that I use and some of the things that I look at on defense when choosing a receiver to throw to in Madden 18. So the play that I went over last time was halfback wheel, and I'll leave a link down below so you can check out that play breakdown. But the play that we're gonna go over right now is the PAF slide. All right, now this play is really good. You have levels over the middle, it's a play action play. I do cancel the play action typically with my R trigger. So I cancel it early. You can do that with R2 as well uh, if you're on PlayStation. Now on the left side of the field, we have a levels concept. So we have the out if someone's playing some type of purple zone or a cloud flat that drops back deeper for the out if they're in zone. All right, we throw to RB in the flat. Over the middle, we have levels. Typically B is gonna be open first and you have A over the middle deep. Now on this play, both the routes on the right side of the field and the out will beat man depending on how the route breaks on the left. So we'll take a look at that as well. But I just wanna let you guys know all that moving forward. So first we're gonna take a look at this against a cover three with purples on the field. So as you know, purples are on the field, they're dropping back deeper, we got the flat and that's super open, man. Super open. All right, you're gonna get a lot of yardage there, especially since the flat pattern comes from the opposite side of the field. So they don't even really acknowledge it until late. All right, so we're gonna change things up. We're gonna go with some hard flats here. Now the out is a little bit more difficult to throw when the safety is in the flat, but if you have a linebacker in the flat, he's already down, he comes down a lot quicker. So I'm gonna show you this in the most difficult situation. I'm gonna throw the out to X with the safety in the hard flat. All right, so you see he is open. All right, it's a tighter window, all right, like I said, but he does get open. All right, very good, very good play. Very easy to read because you can see that safety or that flat player fly down. Basically on the left side of the field, they need to have a flat and a purple to guard this play, which is great because on the halfback wheel, they need a flat and a purple to the right to guard that as well. All right, so this really opens things up and forces them to really play the sidelines, which will just open up the middle. So we'll take a look at the routes over the middle. All right, as you see, they do get open underneath the coverage and you can throw the route that goes over top a little bit later. All right, so you just throw it a little bit later. Oh, we're up, we're in there. <laughs> All right, so we're in there, we're good to go. All right, so we're gonna take a look at this play versus man with no press. And you'll notice that all the routes, all the receiver routes get like super open. All right, so B gets open. We also have the post that gets open and the out that all get open as long as we throw them when they're meant to be thrown, all right? And the receiver there just got pressed and he still gets open on press, it doesn't matter. And I purposely took out the really fast receiver that plays this spot typically. And this guy's like an 88, 89 speed. So I wanted to do that just so you guys can see that these plays do get open against man without a receiver that's you know super fast. There's like a, they have like a 95 speed receiver that typically plays that spot, but I subbed him out. Also, you want your best receiver in this spot, all right, because the next play that we're gonna talk about, you gotta have your best receiver there in order to get open. So next we're gonna throw the out to Sanu. And you see he does get open, the corner gets like spun around and he does get open. And that's basically the play, that's how it works. Against cover two, you can throw between the safeties to A, depending on how the linebacker breaks. So if the middle linebacker does drop extra deep, he's typically going to drop to the side, uh, to the right side. So if he drops to the right side in a cover two, just lead him up and to the left, and typically he'll just get right past him and catch the ball. You just gotta read it though, it's not like a definite. You gotta read it and make sure you have time to throw it over his head. And the next play that I run out of this set is the wide receiver corner, and I run this stock. You have a flat corner combo to the right, you have a vertical on A, and you also have the post on the left. The post you can throw basically against any defense, it doesn't really matter, all right? As long as you make the read and you click on and you cut it off and you catch it with a possession catch. All right, you're not gonna be able to just throw the ball up there and let the computer catch it because the safety's gonna come down, he's either gonna intercept it or he's gonna pop you and you're gonna get hit and you're gonna drop it. So you gotta click on, run horizontal to the line of scrimmage so you have to cut it off and catch it with a possession catch. We'll take a look at that right now. 
All right, so right now we're playing against the cover three. So we click on possession catch. All right, I also like the curl pattern. Now, the reason why I like to keep him on the blue is that he does release, you know, pretty quickly in most cases. But the blue route messes up blitzes. So if someone tries to blitz me, the blocking changes. And the blue route helps protect. He'll chip, you know, do whatever he does, and then he releases. Now, what I like about the curl is the fact that I can playmaker him anywhere I want. So if the curl's open, I'll just throw it, right? So if he's open, just bing, just dot it right over the middle, run with the run with the running back. Typically what people do is that they, they use their, their you know, player in the middle of the field. So when they use their player in the middle of the field, it allows me to really screw around with them with the curl pattern on the halfback. All right, and you also have the flat pattern and wheel or uh, post to the right. But let's look at the curl right here. So you got him out there. All right, I can just throw it immediately, get some yardage. So you can see right there, playmaker him to the right. We can also, again, like I said, if you get rid of that guy, so we'll put him over here, he's gone. All right, that guy's being usered by the defensive player. Guy's usering him. All right, bing, but I dropped it. All right, but you get the point. All right, you can playmaker him anywhere you want. Uh, on the right side of the field, again, you have the flat pattern that does get open when there is no hard flats. And then when they do play hard flats or man, all right, that corner route is open. And you do have to have a really good receiver in that spot if they're going to play man and their number one corner is really good. So again, Sherman, I'm going to have to put Jones over there in order to get that open in man. But we're going to run this here against zone. You'll see it takes a little bit longer to develop than the regular corner pattern. All right, but he does get open. So we'll drop that down again just so you can see it. So I'm not sitting on that safety. <laughs> He play, he's playing the deep middle, so it shouldn't matter. But I just wanted to let you guys see it. So he's like more, there's more room than it actually showed. Because I was sitting on that safety by accident. Uh, now, let's look at this against man. Alright, so we're in regular man, no press. Alright, we're going to throw to Sanu on the break. As soon as he breaks, bing. Alright, that's going to be open. And then we're going to show you here, over on the right side of the field... We have Jones. He does get open. Again, remember, if you're playing against a really good corner, you need a good receiver there. All right, you can't just be some bum. All right, you got to have a good receiver there. Against most corners, any receiver really gets open, but really good corners like Sherman, you're going to need Jones there. Now, let's take a look at this against Press. Now, one of the cool things about Press is if they play some type of press or even man, as long as they don't have a safety over top. So let's say they take their safety out of the equation over here, or they think they run in a corner, you know, they take their safety and they run down or they put them in, you know, one of these, all right, or they, they see that you're hitting the circle pattern a lot, corner pattern, and they do something, you know, stupid like this. All right, so let's say they just get him out of the way. All right, so he's out of the way. What we have here with Roberts, that route's gonna get open and beat man almost every single time, whether it's press or it's not press. Now again, he's of average wide receiver speed. He's in like an 89 speed or 88 speed. If you have a faster player there, it's, it's even better. So we're gonna take a look at this route right here. See that, for whatever reason, the DBs get either confused or they try to press and he goes around them. But we'll take a look at this one more time here. And this is with no press. All right, bing, got him. All right, that route's really good. Now, every once in a while, the DBs will act weird, and sometimes they'll be in position to make a play, but it's very, very seldom. But for whatever reason, they get really confused on that play. I think it's the fact that you have... Um, the inside release with the outside release, it like really screws up the DBs and typically A is just screaming open if there's nobody over top, whether it's press or it's not press. Now a great play this year is the running back screen. So what I do here is I shift my line to the left in order to get my blockers out there a little bit better. Now on the right side of the field, if I notice that they're not playing a hard flat, I might just snap the ball and just throw it. All right, so I typically will do that. If I if I read that there's no hard flat, I'll just throw that immediately. I'm gonna get my cursor off that guy, just so you can see. So shift the line to the left, 
Nobody's going out. Bing. I'll just throw it. All right. I don't even care. So you have two options, which makes the halfback screen really good here. So we're going to run the halfback screen to the left. All right. Just drop back, throw it, and just run. All right. <laughs> just run. A lot of times the blockers don't get out there the way that they probably should, but you still get positive yardage off of the play. We'll run it one more time here. Whoop. <laughs> All right, so that's basically how I run that play. Very simple, very easy. And we also have the run, which is the power. This run is like really fluky. It works, all right? If you have numbers, it typically works. And it's not a terrible run. It's something that you can use to keep your opponent honest, but I, I oftentimes will get like leakage inside, especially in like the backside A-gap where the guard's pulling from. So it's not the best run. You also have this guy here who's trying to block a linebacker, and that's really not a good matchup. If you have a really good tight end to put there, you know you, you'll be in you'll be in pretty good pretty good position. Uh, but this typically this block gets usually screwed up. All right, so it's very relative. Um, use it at your own discretion. I'm not going to say it's like the greatest run, but it's not terrible. You see right here, it worked really well. All right, just depends on you know how things work out, how things shake out. Against nickel, it typically works good. All right, just because of the numbers and the angles. But against other sets, it really it doesn't work amazingly. All right, like 4-3. It's, it's tough to run against run sets, I guess you can say, with that run. All right, but I guess that's normal. That's, you know, that's the way it should be. All right, so that's it. That is the way that this formation is run. This is how I run it. Um, it's very simple, very easy, pretty straightforward, at least, you know, as far as I think. All right, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, one thing also to note is that you typically turn up inside the tackle here. Oh, I'm sorry, not the tackle, the tight end. So the tight end blocks out on the power. All right, just so you know. Tight end blocks out, you go through, and you're good to go. So if you have any questions, look at him, he's just missing the block. This is what I'm talking about. So if you have any questions uh, about this formation, about Madden 18 in general, all right, just leave them down in the comment section. I'll be happy to get to them as quickly as possible and maybe even make a video going over some of the questions that you guys have. All right, so that's it. This is Jay Glee signing out. Thanks for checking in and continue to game strong.